Now we're sitting at the Waitangi Cafe and it's Waitangi Day and we're the only people here. <laughs> Pretty unusual, I mean such a different Waitangi Day this year. Very different, usually there'd be thousands all around this, this area and it's part of the, the celebrations of basically the people that come here every year. Mm. Except this year is a little bit different. How do you feel about this year um, with the Waitangi events being cancelled? Certainly in the last two years with COVID-19 we've learned to adjust. So Waitangi Day shouldn't be any different to any part of our life no. in terms of having to adjust to the, the limitations that are placed upon us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The commemorations are important though, but you were able to negotiate uh, pre-recording those uh, a little bit earlier, which the public now knows about. Were you happy with how the commemorations went? I believe that it was necessary to have a, 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 a commemoration that was pre-recorded. It allowed for the, the marae, for the National Trust, Governor General, Prime Minister, Chief Justice and the BIPs to maintain the dignity of coming to Waitangi and having the commemoration including the worship uh, on mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's one of the most important things, the worship here at Waitangi? I believe on Waitangi Day it is the most important part because if we go back to the beginning, the treaty was signed on the basis of trust mm. and I would say hope. We had to have trust first as a foundation before we could have hope. And that hope as a Christian is a hope-filled future for, for this land and for its people. Mm. Yeah, we focus a lot as a nation on the unity that Waitangi should bring, also the politics that surrounds the day. Not so much on the spiritual significance of it, but from your perspective, why is Waitangi so important? It's important because I believe the voices that were here in 1840 were heard to a degree. It's important that to have harmony for our nation going forward, that voices that exist within our nation have a perspective on the treaty ought to be heard because that's when we reach, uh, I believe, true harmony. Mm, beautiful. How do you think people can like still celebrate Waitangi even though they can't come to events? Because I think for some people it is a big thing like getting out there, coming up to Paihia, mm. being a part of the festivities and then you think, oh it's cancelled, that's it, just another day off. How can people celebrate Waitangi? Well if I go back to 2020, 2021 with regard to the Christian events that we had to have by distance, Waitangi is no different. We mm. have to imagine ourselves here on, this, on these grounds on Waitangi Day and also to have a moment where we can reflect on our history, what the treaty means to us as a nation. We can do that from any part of the world, I believe, and particularly in this current uh, climate with COVID, for example. Maybe people will come and walk on the ground, stand on the grounds, but for me, anyhow, we're able to, to focus on this simply because we, we are thinking through our minds, reflecting on the treaty and its implications for us as a nation. Mm. Obviously your work has been dominated for the last two years by the COVID-19 situation, but in the coming years when COVID isn't a part, thank, thank the Lord, of, of yes. our lives, I mean what are the big issues facing your diocese in particular? Certainly about ensuring that our, our generations to come have faith. And even though COVID has put limitations on, on us as a church, We've been able to maintain our, our, our connection, our bonds, albeit uh, by, by virtual means. Nevertheless, I believe the reconnecting again is going to be part of what our responsibility as the church. And, and I actually believe we'll be seeing more, more of, of the, the, the flourishing of individuals in their lives because there's a hunger to come back to worship in person, mm. to meet in person again. I'm seeing that um, week by week. Yeah, totally. I know for myself, like not being able to go into a place of worship and having those limitations, you, at first it doesn't really take its toll of you, on you, but slowly over time you realise actually, I actually really need to be with people and mm. in the house of the Lord and with other people all worshipping God. So I think you're right, it's totally going to be a beautiful celebration when we can all come back here to Waitangi. And look forward to it in yeah. the way that we're looking forward to our future, that, that is uh, this element of hope that I'm talking about. Yeah. Whatever the vision of our ancestors in 1840, I believe it was built on goodwill and trust and faith. Whatever that meant to them must mean something to us today, so we must never give up that hope for a vision that is full of the hope of, of the goodness of God. Mm.
Well, it's lovely to be sitting down with you and uh, amazing man of God. And I think it would be remiss of us to not finish by asking you to speak a word of karakia over us and the audience, especially on this uh, very special day. Oh, well, thank you very much. Tui te rangi e tū nei, tui e te papa e tokoto nei. Tui, 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 tui. Tui e te atua tau mana tau ihi tau tapu nungi a mātou e noho nei ene au pununga. Tēnei rā nui, te rā i moko tia, te tiri te o waitangi ki konei ki runga i tēnei whenua tapu. Manaki tia, āwhine tia tō iwi puta noa ngā mautere e rua i tēnei rā i ngā rā ki te haere mai. Kia tūturu ai mātou ki roto kia koe, kia tūturu mai koe ki roto ki a mātou i ngā waka toa Ko ihu ko rai te hoki tō mātou ari ki. Āmene. Āmene. Kia ora mātua. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koe.